Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Ed Dubu, physical therapist out of Integrative Physical Therapy in Bellingham, Washington. I'll be 53 this year, and the reason why that's important is because if I go more than just a few days without stretching or doing my exercises, I start to develop and experience some pretty acute low back and hip tightness. I've got a morning routine that I try to get done. It's a series of 10 exercises. And so what I was gonna do is share those exercises with you because if I do those on a regular basis, it really does help to keep my lower back and hip tightness and pain in check and manageable so that I'm not walking around most of the time with lower back pain and stiffness. Now, right when I said there's 10 different limbering and stretching exercises, I know that there's a big number of you that are just gonna turn this off and, and start watching something else. Uh, we're always looking for that. Give me that one or two exercises that just takes care of everything. And sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. But I can tell you this though, especially as you start to get a little bit older, if you want to make a difference and if you want to feel better, it is going to take a commitment of time. And then it's just up to you whether or not you're willing to put the time in. In this video, it's full length, so I'm gonna be taking you through the exercises as I do them. In fact, I woke up today and my back is stiff, just like it is in the mornings. And I was gonna go through my routine and I thought, you know what, maybe there's someone else out there that would benefit from watching me go through my routine. Now, there's a lot of different exercises that you can do for spinal and hip mobility. This just happens to be my sequence and it works for me and I will walk you through it and let's get going. First exercise Romeo and I are gonna do is a cat-cow. And you've probably seen this one before. And it's important that you are a little bit warmed up first. So don't just roll right out of bed and do these. Make sure you've been up for a little bit, maybe had your coffee or something like that, or you're, you're a little bit looser. Get to be on hands and knees. If it's a little difficult to be on your knees. You might need a cushion or something underneath here. And then just gonna slowly drop your head and round. And round out your spine. And then let your tummy relax. And bring your head up into extension. And keep going. We'll do about 10, 12 of these. And as you do this, and as you do more reps, you should find that your range of motion starts to improve as your spine starts to get a little bit more flexible. And we'll do about three more of these. Just kind of listen to my voice as you're continuing to do these. And that's two. And we'll do one more. Three. This next stretch we're gonna do is we're gonna try to increase the flexion of our low back a little bit. So it's a little bit like a child's pose. You're just gonna try to sit back as far as you can. I like to support my head. Play around with the positions of your arms. The whole goal of this is to feel a little bit of a stretch in your lumbar spine, trying to get a little bit more flexion out of your spine. Once again, as you stay in this position for a little longer, the tissue should start to relax a little bit more. And it takes a while for that tissue to respond and for that tissue to relax. We'll stay down here for another 10 or 15 seconds. slowly 
come out. So that was flexion. Now what we're going to do is we're going to work a little bit on extension, on prone on elbows. So I want you to work your way down to your stomach if you can. And then we're going to go all the way down. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to slowly bring our elbows in. Try to get a little bit of extension of our lower spine. Take a couple of breaths in. As you exhale, I want you to feel your lumbar spine kind of extending, going into a little bit of extension. And then you're going to come back down. And then completely relax. Elbows go in. Take a big breath in. Exhale. Let the low back relax. Pause for just a couple of seconds here, and then back down again. And we'll do a total of 10. That was two. I'll do the counting. Don't worry. And back up. And that's three. Seven. Once again, as you start to get more flexible, you should feel like you're able to go a little bit further into extension as that lumbar spine starts to loosen up. And that's eight. We'll do a couple more. transition to our back nice and easy. Now what we're going to work on are pelvic tilts. I'm going to bend this elbow just so you can see my, my pelvis rocking back and forth. So I'm exaggerating the motion, but really what we're after here is contracting what's known as the transverse abdominis to flatten out our spine. So we're going to breathe in, we're going to breathe into our belly. And as we do that, my low back's going to arch up not forcing it, and then I exhale. I try to bring my belly button down towards the floor. That's going to create a little bit of a posterior tilt in my lumbar spine. So I'm going to inhale into my belly, and then I exhale, and I'm going to flatten out my low back. And I'm just rocking this pelvis back and forth. And we're going to keep working on this. This one's going to be a time-based, anywhere from 30 to 45 seconds. Just until you feel that the mobility of your spine is increasing. And that's really what this is after. If I only did this three or four times, I'm not really going to get much of a change in the mobility of my lumbar spine. Ten seconds here, and we're just rocking the pelvis back and forth. Perfect. And then relax for a second. What we'll do next is we're going to work on some bridging. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to tuck our shoulder blades kind of back and down. And that's going to cause your chest to pop just a little bit. Then I'm going to do the pelvic tilt. I'm going to engage that, try to flatten out my spine. So my shoulder blades are pinched together. My, my spine is flat. And then I'm going to lift up. And then I'm going to come back down again. You can pull your toes up if you want to. Oh, hi, baby Romeo. And back down again for me. 
haven't been able to get him to do the exercises with me. Just a little bit on the lazy side. So we'll do about 10 of these. That's three. Back down, completely relax. Rock the pelvis, back up. Four, pause. Back down, relax the pelvis. Pelvic tilt, engage the core. That's five. You're only going to come up as far as you can comfortably. These aren't designed to cause any type of pain or discomfort. What we're trying to do is just kind of wake up the tissue just a little bit, improve some mobility of our spine. If you're more comfortable keeping your feet down on the floor, that's fine. We'll do four more. That's one. Completely relax. That's two. That's three. And that's four. Very nice. We're going to transition to right into lower trunk rotations. So what we're doing here is we're going knee to opposite ankle. I don't expect you to touch, but that's the direction of motion that we want. So in this situation, my left knee is cruising down towards my right ankle. What you may have to do first is start off with a smaller amplitude until things loosen up. We're going to work on this for about a minute or two, so just get comfortable. We're just going to slowly rock our legs side to side. Now, some people find it more comfortable to keep their knees together initially. And that's all right too. As you get more flexible, I want your feet apart and really try to drop that knee to the opposite ankle. This is more of a limbering type of stretch. I'm getting a little bit of a pull through my low back and my hip on both sides. My right side happens to be tighter, so I'm getting more of a stretch on my right side. You can pause if that feels better for you. I also like to get my neck into it, so as my legs are dropping to my left, I swing my head over to the right, and then I can see opposite. We'll do a couple more. Excellent. And now relax. Now I'm going to show you a couple different ways to stretch your hip. If you can't do it lying down, don't worry. I'm also going to show you how to do it in a chair. But first we'll do the lying down version. Right ankle over left knee. And I'm going to reach through here and I'm going to grab on here. Now for some people this is going to be just fine and you can explore that stretch a little bit and hold it there. For other people, they're gonna be straining because their arms aren't as long or maybe they're not very flexible. So I'm gonna show you a first way that you can alternate this. Imagine that you're up against a wall and you can just put your foot up against the wall. So here my foot up is up, is up against the wall. And this way, I don't have to use my hands in order to feel a good stretch. And while everyone's holding this stretch, hopefully they're holding it this way or their foot's up against a wall so they can relax their arms. Then I'm gonna show you how to do it in a chair. So in this example here, I'm stretching out my right hip. So the right ankle uh, goes right around the left knee. And I'm gonna lean forward from the hips. It's important that you try to keep your lumbar spine nice and flat so you have a little hollow in your spine and then hinge at the hips. And then once you're in this basic position you can explore it, change the angle, you can even push down on that knee if you want to. Remember it should not be painful. You know the hip is a big strong muscle. We're stretching the glute max here and it's going to take a little while for that muscle to relax. And of course do the other side. Imagine sitting at your desk doing some work. Just cross your leg and get a nice prolonged stretch of your hip. 
If you find that one side is a little tighter than the other, then make sure that you give that side a little bit more attention. Remember to breathe through the stretch. As you're exhaling, take up the slack and wait for that muscle to almost feel a release and relax. Now another way to stretch that hip is a little bit more lateral. So you start in the same position, but then you're going to reach down and cradle it, and then you're going to pull it across your body. You don't have to be as serious as this guy. You can kind of smile a little bit. Maybe it'll help your stretch. And you'll feel it in a slightly different area. You're going to hold that there. Once again, until you feel that tissue start to relax. Do the other side. Cross. Lean forward with the opposite arm and then kind of pull that across and you'll get a nice lateral hip stretch. Remember, this shouldn't be painful at all. Remember to smile. Come on, dude. Lighten up a little bit and hold that stretch. Very nice. If you're on the floor, this is what it's going to look like. Right legs up. If you can, you can try to cross it on the other side here. I'm going to reach here and I'm going to try to pull it across my body. I can do a little bit of a twist into here if I can. That brings my spine into it. But what I'm really after here is just a nice stretch along this lateral part of my hip. And let's just hold that stretch right here. Remember to breathe and kind of let it relax a little bit. We should stretch out Romeo's hip right there too. Actually, he does have a tight right hip. We've kind of worked on it as well. It's a product of having a mom and dad that are both physical therapists. We're going to hold this here a little bit longer. So my right side is definitely tighter. So if you find that there's one side that's tighter than the other, it makes sense to give it a little bit more work. So I always stretch my right hip and low back a little bit more. Switch and do the other side. Left leg here. Cross it over. Reach across. And let's just gently pull it across. And what you should be feeling with this one here is once again a little bit of a stretch kind of through that hip, through the back. It just depends upon where you are the tightest. And I'm just kind of cradling that, cradling that knee. And then let's breathe through it a little bit. I personally love stretching. I feel it's a great way to get, well, first of all, flexible, but it also helps to loosen it up because I don't know about you, but sometimes I just feel very stiff when I move around and I really don't like that feeling. So if you spend some time on a regular basis stretching, it will make a difference. Another 10 second hold. Remember, exhalation is relaxing to a muscle. So really kind of breathe into that tightness and then exhale. And then oftentimes you'll feel that release of the tissue. And we're slowly going to come out of there. We've got two more to do. You guys are doing great. The next one here is some mermaid stretch. We're trying to open up this lateral part of the rib cage. So I'm going to be on my side here. Now my knees, my feet, my hips are all in a straight line versus this way, they're not in a straight line. So everything's in a straight line. My hip, my top hip is rotated forward instead of being back here. And the idea is if you do this correctly, you should, you should feel a stretch along this lateral part of the rib cage. And I want you to visualize that we're trying to make this nice little C curve of our rib cage. This top hand is just going to be for a little bit of balance and so you don't feel like you're having to support yourself. Lean forward if you need to. Explore the stretch once you're in the basic position. And then once you're here, really focus on breathing, letting it relax, and just kind of sinking into that. If it's bothering your shoulder, you may have to be a little bit more firm in your shoulder to stabilize that. If your arm is getting sore, you come down to your elbow. It might not give you as much of a stretch, but if that's where you need to be for right now, that's okay. I'm going to come back up on my hand. Let's breathe into it. And 
let's hold this for another 10, 15 seconds. If you want to impress your friends, you can tell them that you're stretching your quadratus lumborum. Big fancy word, but we just call this one the mermaid stretch. Although I had a patient tell me the other day it's more of a Cleopatra stretch. So she was a little bit older than me, so I suppose you can uh, call it what you like. When you're ready to come out of this stretch, because we're in kind of a tricky position, bend your knees up to your chest slowly. That takes the tension off the stretch, and then you can just kind of walk your way up. Then you move your little doggy's butt over just a little bit, and let's stretch the other side. So hand, hip, knees, and feet are all in a nice straight line. My top hip is rotated forward. This hand is just for a little bit of balance. And then once I'm here, I'm going to explore the stretch. Once again, for me, my right side's tighter. So I really camp out here a little bit longer when I'm doing this for my own practice. It feels really good to open up that lateral part of the rib cage because we don't do a lot of side bending like this in our normal life. We do a lot of flexion, extension, rotation, but we don't do any real side bending. And so for me, I feel this all the way up. Exhale and just kind of sink into it a little bit. Another 10 second hold. We're going to slowly come out of it, bend your knees up towards your chest, walk your hands up. Perfect. Brings us to stretch number 10. And stretch number 10 is not really a stretch, it's more of a strengthening exercise. And like I said earlier, I've got a scoliosis and I do suffer from lower back pain if I don't keep my back strong. And so you've seen this one before, it's called the bird dog. If you have trouble, weight bearing through your wrist. You can make a fist if you need to, but whatever it takes. You wanna to try to keep your hands below your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips. And then what I'm gonna do here is, is I'm gonna keep my back nice and flat, but I'm gonna engage that transverse abdominis like we did at the beginning. So I'm not rounding out my back. I'm gonna to try to keep my back as flat as I can. Try to slowly Try to slowly suck my belly button in towards my spine. And then I'm gonna kick out one leg, get my balance, kick out one arm, get my balance, and I'm gonna hold, and then back down. We're gonna stay on the same side, and we're gonna do five of these. That's number two, I want you to hold it, and back down. Number three, and if you notice on my hand, my thumb is up. Makes it a little bit easier on your shoulder. If it hurts your shoulder, you can bring it down a little bit if you need to. And the goal is I don't want your heel to be any higher than your buns. So it's not about trying to get elevation. It's about trying to elongate. Back down. We'll do two more. Excellent. Very nice. Now we're going to switch. Now we're going to lift your right leg and left arm. So left leg first. Get your balance. Your foot can do whatever you want. You can point it. You can pull it back. You can keep it neutral. Doesn't really matter. Left arm. Hold it for about a three count. And then back down. Good. We'll do five of these. Good. That's three. Very nice. Hold it nice and steady. Back down. The magic in this exercise is when you hold it as steady as you can. That's four. We'll go one more. Nice and slow. Keep it locked. Keep it locked. 
Excellent. And then we're done with the routine, nicely done. So that's the technique. There's 10 different exercises. It is a little commitment of time, uh, but I'm telling you, if you do it on a regular basis, it should help to improve your spinal mobility and flexibility. If you found the video helpful, please consider giving it a thumbs up, subscribing, and ding, turn on your notifications so that you never miss another one of our videos. If you have any questions, please leave them down below. And thanks for watching.